<laughs> Sometimes I genuinely forget what I should be saying. Good morning. We'll this is good. Our... We'll start with good morning. That's good. We'll start with good morning. It is Wednesday, October 18th, 2023. And who doesn't want to start their day off with Brenda? I'm so excited. <laughs> There's a few people who won't get up this early. I got to tell you. They'll tune in later. So good morning. Good morning and welcome. We're so glad that you're joining us this morning. And uh, we were just on the way in. So I, it's our prayer vigil at the church. I normally do two to three. Brenda does three to four. And we both kind of nodded off during our prayer time. And Brenda said, but I'm reading a book now. It's, it's probably, it's a lot, there's a lot of prayer stuff in it. But he has everybody, he says, down on your knees, like 28 times a chapter. And if I get down on my knees, you'll be coming to pick me up on Sunday because I won't get back up. And I wrote to the girl that's organizing and I said, do you think God will allow people not to be on their knees? She said, oh, I'm sure. Because we make these rules for other people. Because mm -hmm. what's a person in a wheelchair? How are they supposed to pray? Are they supposed to? Excuse me, there's the knees are like it's not going. Yeah. And I just read an article of a man who wrote out in scripture all the different positions of prayer. And one of them was on my bed, which is what Hezekiah prayed on his bed. Thank God for Hezekiah. <laughs> right? And I was like, oh, thank you. And that was just so freeing because Brent said on the way to Ann, does that make me a bad Christian if I fell asleep during prayer? I'm like, no, so did I. And because I think if we start condemning ourselves because we don't measure up to whatever mm -hmm. rules we think exist with regards to prayer, then we just won't pray. Yeah, it, it gets to be too hard. Yes. He has a lot of hard rules. I'm yes, and so I'm just with. like, no, the heart, it's what's in the you heart. Know, there's a poem, two, these three old guys talking, and the last line always sticks in my head. The prayingest prayer I ever prayed was standing on my head, because this whole story, he fell into a well. So how are you going to get down on your knees in that situation, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, yeah. so if, we free you to pray anywhere you are. Right? <laughs> anywhere you are. With whatever words you have, God just invites you to come. Absolutely. Yes, so just come. So this morning is Hymn Wednesday where we get to talk about a song. Any kind of song that has ministered, it usually has to do with Jesus though. Well, yours um, was good because your research was way better than mine. But she chose a song. I was so inspired. So the song is Take, Take my, my life, life and Let It Be. And so now why did you choose the song? I don't know. I had picked another one, as you know. I've been thinking I wanted to do Jesus Loves Me, This I Know, the senior version. Jesus Loves Me, This I Know, for the Bible tells me so, even though my hair is white as snow, that kind of thing. And then I thought, I don't know, it just popped into my head. Actually, I googled good hymns or something. I forget. Oh. <laughs> and three of them I didn't know, and this was the top one. But I know this hymn, and it's been that I've sung many times mm -hmm. and love this. There's something about the old hymns with the deep words written to Scripture, mm -hmm. you know. I heard this joke once about people that sing hymns and people that sing choruses. This old guy went to the city and he heard in a church the people that sing choruses. And his neighbor said, what's that mean? He said, well, with the same, a hymn we say, the cow comes home. With the chorus we sing, the cow comes home, the cow comes home, the cow comes home, the cow comes home. Well, because maybe then they'll figure out that the cow really did come home. That must be And because I remember uh, being in... in um, Protestant theology class and we had different um, denominations come in and shared so we had a Pentecostal pastor come in and he said do you want to know why we sing victory in Jesus you know 18 times because on the 17th time we finally got it and oh, on the 18th time true. we can actually sing the victory <laughs> and I was like okay Lord I just don't want to be critical when I come into worship I just want to I just want, Lord tune my heart to yours a wonderful lady, uh, probably in her 70s when I met her, she had traveled the world singing, um, teaching about the Lord and so speaking in maybe other languages. And she said, when I don't know the words, I just sing in my spirit. Mm. And she said, I don't want to miss out on what the spirit has for me just because mm -hmm. I don't know the words. And I was like, oh, tune my heart to that. There's, there's so far to go to get where we want to be. Yes. You know, and I had a big moment the other day I was thinking the reason we're so hard on our parents is because we're judging them by today's standards my dad was not my mom either we're not touchy-feely huggy people but there wasn't one person in the whole of the world in 1940 and 50 that was touchy huggy feely and but we judge them by now because you have to do this with your kid and that with your kid and 
they just didn't, they were probably better than their parents who were long distance, you know? <laughs> we judge, we judge people. We, if, if everybody just stopped judging people, it would be so much easier to live. Right, which is a little bit about what this song is about. It's less of me and more of you. Mm -hmm. So for those of you who are like, what, what are those words again? Take my life and let it be consecrated Lord to thee. Take my moments and my days. Let them flow in endless praise. Let them flow in endless praise. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Swift and beautiful for thee. Take my voice and mm -hmm. let me sing always only for my king. Take my lips and let them be filled with messages for thee. Filled with messages for thee. Take my silver and my gold, not a mite would I withhold. Take my intellect and use every power as thou shalt choose. Every power as thou shalt choose. Take my will and make it thine. It shall be no longer mine. Uh, take my heart, it is thine own. It shall be thy royal throne. It shall be thy royal throne. Mm. Take my love, my Lord, I pour at thy feet its treasure shore. store. Take, my, take myself and I will be ever only all for thee. Ever only all for thee. And this was a, a young lady. She, was, she died when she was 42. She was awfully sickly, but very, very smart. And the story behind it is that she went to, um, she had a bit of a holiday and uh, ended up being filled in a, a house filled with people. Some are believers. And as her words were, some were con uh, converted but non-rejoicing Christians. And God is said, that a scary statement? Non-rejoicing Christians. Oh. And the Bible says we tell them by their love and they're going, mm. People are at my door. I hate that. <laughs> That's so convicting. I don't like answering my door. Um, and, and she said, the Lord told me to pray, ask for the whole house. And we've been talking about this, right? We need to ask the Lord, what is it that you want me to pray? Because if the Lord tells us what we're to pray, then he's going to answer that prayer. And so the Lord gave her the whole house. She said every single one of them went home with a blessing. And this song came and it says, uh, and these little couplets formed themselves and chimed in my heart one after another till they fill, finished with ever only all for thee. So I want to ask you a question. Okay. When did you make that decision? How hard was it? And did your parents... Because we have people in our church, younger people now, that are trying to decide whether to be in ministry or not. So what happened for you? Uh, Did you have a sudden awakening in the night or something? <laughs> no, what's interesting is uh, my mom, my parents were supportive. My dad was like, how much time are you spending over there? <laughs> uh, but my mom actually felt called when she was 16 to be a missionary. But she never went because her parents weren't supportive. Oh. And so when the Lord called me into ministry, she was very supportive and just encouraging and never said, you're spending too much time there. She was just because she never had that opportunity. So and that was something I didn't learn until much later in life, mm -hmm. that she felt called to be a missionary when she was 16. But her parents basically said, um, there's no money in that. You need to be a nurse or a teacher. You know, the things that women did in the in the 60s and uh so she became a teacher and she was never very happy and so yeah it uh so for me that whole idea of uh take my life was actually encouraged but in how my did family you know that? um i had always i don't want to say always i'd always had a heart for the lord and doing whatever he asked me to do so i was always involved in the church i was always uh, teaching and serving and then our uh, previous bishop bishop keith said hey i see the makings of a pastor in you and actually there was a gentleman in our church this was in the day when you used to vote in all the positions oh yes mm. and so you'd go to society meeting and there and you kind of didn't want to make eye contact with anyone because you're like what are they going to vote me in for and he stood up and he said uh i think jennifer wager should be nominated to do bbs this year and i was like all right. And like, it just went from there. 
And, and so I had the encouragement of other people in my church family mm -hmm. as well that said, no, we see this in you as well. So uh, not only was it um, just a desire to serve the Lord in my heart, but also uh, the affirmation of people around me that saw that. Which, which is, is important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's not just all made up in your head. That's good that your parents were so supportive because it's hard if you are wandering out there on your own. And we know stories of different people who, missionaries and whatever, who have gone with no support at all. Mm -hmm. um, and it's hard. Mm -hmm. So just in case you didn't realize, this is Pastor Appreciation Month. Yes. So I wanted to use this time to say thank you to Pastor Lead Pastor Jen Wager and Jay McIntyre, the associate, and Lay person Rob Webb and Henry and Phyllis, Henry Dick and Phyllis Slesser, who are retired. Yes. And I have a bunch of questions for you. So sneaky. Ephesians four. So Christ gave himself the apostle Christ gave Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the pastors and teachers to equip his people. Do you feel adequate all the time? No. That's a relief because you know <laughs> no. we're, we're a little afraid of your star quality. <laughs> No, every day. So this song, that's what makes this song so wonderful is like, take my life. It is a prayer, right? It is a prayer. Mm -hmm. Lord, take my life and let it be consecrated all for thee, right? This is a prayer. It's different than I surrender all, which is like, well, heck no. I don't, I don't have much. I won't cost. <laughs> but this is like, no, Lord, calls. you just take it. You use it. My thoughts, my will. The one line that really stood out to me was... Um, take my will and make it thine. It shall be no longer mine. Mm -hmm. Take my heart. It is thine own. It shall be your royal throne. Like take my will. Like I want to be conformed into the likeness of your son. There's like, a verse in, is in Proverbs or Psalms. Lord, make me willing to be willing. Yes. Which I pray a lot. Right. Make me willing to be willing. So what's the difference, you know, because the Bible says, be sure you know the condition of your flocks and give careful attention to your herds. So what's the difference between doing that for us and just being plain nosy? Oh, I just want you to experience the fullness of God. Like, that's my heart. Uh, so Frances goes on. I love this because she said, I have personal spiritual influence on others. That was her heart, that she would have personal spiritual influence on others. And I just, I want people to experience the fullness of God. I feel like my life verse is... Um, uh, uh oh, I've come that you might have life and life to the full. And so I'm like, that's true for everyone. Mm -hmm. So I, my heart's desire is that every person would experience the fullness of God. So when I see people not experiencing the fullness of God for whatever reason, my heart is to help that person. So you're right. Is it nosy or is it encouraging? That's where you really have to be like, okay, Lord, what is the purpose behind these mm -hmm. questions? So, so. We're not all shining examples of the flock all the time. That's okay. Neither am I. <laughs> we're, on, we're, we're in this boat together. Oh, you know, I, I've got to say about all of you, you have never embarrassed us or our church. Oh, good. Do you know how big that is? I remember we had a pastor before, with Pastor Cliff, who's now our bishop, and he came into the service one day and he said, I was standing in line and two old ladies, I don't think he used the word old, <laughs> Two old ladies were using, were talking about their church and how awful it was. And the pastor did this and the pastor did that. And he said it, please. At least if we're going to talk about the church, do you have to do it in public and run us down? Something mm. along that effect. Because people hear those things and then they use them against us. I heard one of my friends who years ago who came to our church after some deliberation. One lady said to her, you're not going up the church on the hill, that cult up there. I said, Margaret, we're not a cult. We just love Jesus. But because people look on the outside and they judge what goes on there, right? Yes. So this is what you do. Oh, and I was said, told you before, if we had to pay you by the hour, we couldn't afford you. And even our retired pastors, the quote, retired, but they do small things throughout the service or occasionally preach or visit people in the hospital. Pastor Cliff once said, when we were doing a birthday party or something for Phyllis, he said, I'd go to the hospital and I'd find out Phyllis had already been there before me because she has that kind of comforting gift. But she was a nurse, so, you know, blood doesn't bother her as much as it would you and I. I get a little woozy sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
The Bible says in Jeremiah, you are shepherds after God's own heart and you lead with knowledge and understanding. And I hope this is how you do it with Colossians 1.28. He is the one we proclaim, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom so that we may present everyone fully mature in Christ. To this end, I strenuously contend with all the energy Christ so powerfully works in me. Amen. Because we look at your schedule and we think you're nuts. <laughs> in a nice way. Like, is there any other Because way? you're up at five in the morning, not just on the when we're doing 24-hour prayer, but you're up, you know, praying and then you kayak for a couple of hours and you start visiting people and you do this and you do that and you're running somewhere all the time. And we admire that energy. So where do you get that energy? Is it because you're just young? Yeah. Thank God. <laughs> I don't have to feel guilty. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just, I like, I'm a task oriented person. So I just like to pack everything in as much as possible before the day starts. Because you never know where the rest of the day is going to go. So you put in at the first part of the day, those things that need to get done. Coffee, like. breakfast exercise exercise uh, prayer bible uh, reading and if you get those all in before you start anything else then the rest of your day just goes so much better so galatians says do not get weary in doing good mm -hmm. do you ever just because it says in the proper time we'll reap harvest if we not do not give up do you ever just say oh i'm done today yeah yep, i'm done how would you tell us to handle that uh don't make any decisions Oh, well, that's a good one. <laughs> Don't make a decision on Sunday afternoon or Monday. Those are bad times to make decisions. Because those for are your pastor. after speaking. Yeah. yeah. I always wonder, because we were all big for a long time on don't work on Sunday, but we always made our pastors work on Sunday. I could never figure out the logic of that. <laughs> I take Monday off. <laughs> It's all good. But yeah, like don't, when you're feeling kind of blah, don't ever make decisions during those times. Like those are not the right times to make decisions. So this is a note for the board. Okay. First Corinthians nine fourteen. The Lord has commanded that those who preach the gospel should receive their living from the gospel. Which I do. Yeah, I hope we pay you enough. <laughs> you do. But because I know of churches where the pastor has been hammered to death nickel and there are um biography books written about pastors in the 17 1800s 1900s where their children were threadbare mm -hmm. they gave them the, the parsonage and when we had a parsonage many many years ago in our church visited one night over there in the past it was hot and i said don't you have air no well let's open a window they said no they're all painted shut uh -huh. Why isn't somebody fixing this? You all take very good care of me. I know we do. But there are there may be somebody's pastor out there, some congregation member out there who needs to look at their pastor's living and to be kinder. Because they're not at your beck and call 24 hours a day, right? That's correct. So this is God's promise for you. 1 Timothy 3.13 Those who have served well gain an excellent standing and great assurance in their faith in Jesus Christ. So... 1 Thessalonians 5, respect those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord. They admonish us, esteem them highly in love because of their work. I have to say, we appreciate you guys. Can you call your pastor guys? I appreciate you, guys, you people because you teach the hard subjects. We've had sermons about money and forgiveness is big and all those kind of things that some churches never touch. Mm. So to keep on doing what you're doing is a wonderful thing for us. We we appreciate you. And I want to say um, for us as, as a congregation, we could level up a little. We could. We could all be doing more than we are, right? So I want to tell you, this little plant, it's a succulent. It's from sort of me and the congregation. Can you all see it there? It's a succulent because it's the only thing I can keep alive in my house, but I'm giving it to you for the office because succulents are full of water. Like there's a bunch of us full of the Holy Spirit, right? Your job is to get it out of us into actual action. Mm. Can you take on this responsibility? <laughs> I just <laughs> Do had you want to change your job now? <laughs> I had a conversation with Dwayne last week. Dwayne's our community garden guy. I, I said, okay, whose responsibility is going to be to water the, the house plants in the, in the, church office and I said I'll do it on Tuesdays <laughs> and he's like okay 
So I will make sure it gets watered. But that's the thing. It hardly needs watering. It sustains itself. It's not quite a good congregational picture because they don't need watering very much. But it's a plant for all of you to remember you are loved. Oh, thank and you. And thank you for letting me hijack this devotional because I really did because you did not know this was happening. You still talked about take my life and let it be. <laughs> Which is still a good song. Which is still a good song. And it is a reflection of what each one of our lives should be. The guilt is the place. We're all set to go. Okay. Shall I pray for you all, pastors? Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Father God, for pastors everywhere who pour their hearts out for us. Help us to be more appreciative and more willing and more able to do our part in the kingdom. Will you encourage them today, encourage mm. especially the five in our church. Let them have a blessed welcome, love a day with their friends and family and encourage, as they encourage each of us, Lord, we thank you for them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And Thanks. I probably will forget the tagline. Be sure to go outside, I don't know, do something or other. I forget how the whole thing goes. She's only been watching every day for two, three and a half years. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. <sighs> We're actually at, I think, number 948. See, we admire that stamina. <laughs> like, and this, and we have learned so much. Oh, good. And when, when there's maybe 20 on in the morning, when you check on YouTube to see hundreds of people have watched these devotionals. Yeah. It's a great way to reach people for the faith. Yeah, I love it. I love it. So with this in mind, my dear, dear friends, <laughs> Thank you, Brenda. Remember to like, share, go outside, and help, help your, your community experience, experience yeah. Christ. I got the almost thing right. <laughs> okay, bye.